the world that he gave us his son who he lived his life a torment for sin and he opened the life gate and it still remain open it have not closed as yet and so i implore you all to bid those that are outside to come on in because it will be closed soon and very soon we give god thanks for this another week as we gather on this platform to study the word amen to encourage each other to worship to fellowship as we brace each other up in the faith knowing that united we stand divided we fall coming to you from the church of god of sabbath keeping here in ottawa canada and out of montreal as well let me welcome all our visiting friends and those that are joining us for the very first time if you're here all the ministers and well wishes we say welcome 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 to this the last wednesday for the month of march 2024 it has been a wonderful month since the beginning we have been empowered and strengthened through the man of god wisdom and knowledge have been imparted to us and i trust that we will apply our heart to wisdom before i pray as we look at the subtopic this evening stress management I want to leave a verse with us as we go into tonight study. First Peter 5 and verse 7. Passing all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, holy and righteous you are. We give you thanks and we give you praise this evening because we recognize, Lord, that there is none like you. Whether we praise you, you remain God. It is like a water without a fish remain water, but a fish without a water is a dead fish. And so, Father, we know that you are God all by yourselves. You can still be God without us, and you are still God without us. But without you, we are nothing. And so we thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you because of your love for us, Lord. You have sent him to reconcile us, O oh Lord. And so we are grateful, O oh Lord, that we have this privilege and this access to call sons and daughters of the Most High, and we have this privilege to come into your most holy place. I pray, God, as we bow ourselves before you on this platform, you will forgive us of all our sins and our trespasses, and I pray, God, that your will be done in our lives. Your will be done here on earth. Your will be done tonight on this platform as we open for this another evening. Lead, we pray, Father, direct, we pray. We place our teacher and presenter in your hands. Father, you have been using him from the beginning of this month. And I trust tonight is no less. Father, where your Holy Spirit will empower him as he come to feed your people. Father, we pray for all our readers. We pray, Father, for those who are working behind the scene. We pray, Father, for those, O oh Lord, who will 
be typing in the chat and who those who will be reading mighty God whatever be post O Lord to enlighten our presenter and those O Lord will be participating I pray in the name of Jesus even for those silent listeners that will be coming on tonight Father I pray for a word upon each and every one in the name of Jesus Father we ask you Lord that even when we post this presentation on our YouTube channel as we use this medium to share the word that your people across the globe will be empowered and those who are out of God and Christ mighty God will receive a word and come to you whom to know is life eternal. Lead we pray, direct we pray. Let everything be done to your honor and to your glory as we ask these mercies and to you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, with no further ado, at this time I present to you our teacher and presenter, Pastor Philbert. Please receive him in Jesus' name. Over to you, sir. God bless you. Thank you, sir. And a big good night to everyone. It's good to be here one more time, and it's another great opportunity to share the words and to be a part of the word family over there in Ottawa, Canada. It's great to be here one more time. Uh, let me say this before because I might just forget. Uh, but then say eat and go. I am going to be out for at least a month. As you as you well know, I, I lecture lecture and it's a part of what I do. So I lecture in a PhD program for a overseas university where I teach research method in psych methods in psychology and I have another course coming up, Child and Adolescent Psychopathology. And both course, courses are running just side and side. So it is going to take me away for a couple of weeks and I will not be able to join any study at all for, for the period of at least a month. But as soon as I am done and all of that is cleared, then most definitely I will rejoin you. God is just a God of timing because child and adolescent psychopathology, I expected that course to come in May, but I took sick last year, the first, second week of April, and it had to be moved because of my illness. And they were trying to find someone else to teach the course and could not find anyone else. And so, I had to do it in May. So I thought it was going to be in May this year, but it starts tomorrow night. And I was just thinking, how oh, awesome God is because had it started last night, then I would not be here tonight. You know, so God is just such an awesome God. So I want to give him thanks and I want to express my sincere gratitude for the opportunity to be here for the past three weeks, you know, just to share with you. It has been an experience. It has been a wonderful time. And I enjoy, I enjoyed it immensely. And whether I am presenting or not, I will continue to join and will continue to enjoy the family love and fellowship. Thank you again. Uh, we are going to move into our presentation tonight. I think I have said a mouthful. I'm going to miss you. So we're going to move into our presentation tonight and see where we can go. Did we have any assignment for last week? Good night. Good night again, Bishop. I hope that you all are, are seeing my screen. 
Let me see if I can. Yes, I'm seeing it from my hand. I just hope that everyone is seeing it. All righty. All right, so as you tell, this is just a little bit of me. Recording it. This is just a little bit of me and the company I'm a part of, 390 Training and Consultancy Services. I'll be a presenter tonight and we'll be looking at stress management. Our objectives are our strategic learning outcomes. Participants will be able to identify stressful situations. Participation, participants will be able to analyze stressful patterns in their lives situation. Participants will be able to apply varying skills and techniques to stressful situations. Did we get any, did, did we complete the assignment last week, Sister Wendy? Did we get a chance to, to complete them? Um, our, our team, because we're all over, not everyone was able to um, participate in it, but a few of us gave some points on the topic. So I believe we did a, an okay job. <laughs> okay. Let, is the, the, what about the other groups? Yes, our groups um, did some research as well. Not all of us, but I believe our representative, Deacon Davis, is on, and he will give you an update. Ah, uh, that sounds good. Evangelist Quarry? What about your group? She type in the chat, no, sir. I don't know. Didn't remember. Sorry about that. No, sir. Um, I did not remember to do any research at all. Was way too busy over the week. Not an excuse, but the reality. <laughs> all right, so I blame it on your husband. Please do. <laughs> he's handsome enough. He'll, he's able to take the blame. <laughs> All right, Bishop, that one sounds like you. Right? All right, so, Sister Wendy, Bishop, your group, can, can we use five minutes here to, to just do the presentation for both groups? Oh, yes. All right, so let me stop sharing and just allow both groups to go ahead and do their presentations. So five minutes should be good enough because we have a lot of work to do tonight. I'm going to run through my presentation quickly and then we do the work at the, 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 at the back end, do the work at the back end so that, you know, we can leave here. A whole lot of information and, you know. Okay understanding as to how we work this thing too. Who'd want to go first? I'll get it over with, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like confidence. I'm really working on that one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> okay, so... um. You mentioned that um, we needed to have um, an impact statement, how it affect, um, affected the life. You said that we should actually keep it general. We can make it personal. We did one that is general. And also the second part is our stop point, right? So what we came up with was um, our impact statement is the trauma is really a person 
that um, comes into one's home. So it could be either the person could be living with them or actually just a random act of destruction where that person actually kills, you know, family members and you are the one, or let's say I'm the one that's left um, to face everything. So I'm the only survivor of that situation. Um, what, what the feelings and behavior that we came up with that normally would impact someone like that is first sometimes a state of shock. Um, they become saddened, angry, you know, feelings of betrayal, um, also getting angry and also blames God. They may become depressed, lonely, and want to give up on life in situations like that. Our stop point is, um, we thought was the person like feeling numb, wondering what is next? What do I do? Where do I go? They really don't have, most times don't want to even speak to anybody and so on. They can close, one can close themselves in a closet away from the world and really having a lack of direction. So that's what we came up with. And <laughs> that's it. Thank Our you. Very thought provoking. One of the things, so, so for example, I, I, you spoke about survivor's trauma, but, but one of the things I, I want to ask, ask about is the whole thing about, say for example, a conflict within the church and you are not a part of it in terms of a part of the cascas, but some way, somehow, you know, you try to make peace and then everything fell down on you. How, 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 we, how do you resolve that in terms of the, the impact statement and the stop point? The stop point really is that traumatic thought that comes to you and when it comes to you, it shuts down everything, everything you do. You know, sometimes it allows you to feel numb, but but it shuts you down where you can't concentrate, you can't focus, you can't do anything at all. You're just shut down. How, how, how do you relate to that situation? Because here we are going to have now the inter conflict. How do you relate to that situation? This is, this is really like a good general um, situation because you, you definitely have all these feelings of you feel like nobody wants you, like you don't feel belonged, you know, you don't feel like um, they didn't include you. So you feel that exclusion, right? And dealing with it <clears throat> is sometimes, I, I would not say that I would give up on God in this aspect, but go to God right? Asking the best direction or um, going to the leader um, to say, how can I help? Or is there a reason why um, I wasn't included? Or, you know, sometimes it's really hard. It all depends on the situation. But basically, that's how I go. I like to go to um, either leaders or the person who may have been in charge and just to find out some more information. And if then you still feel shut down, the only thing is go to God and just pray about the situation. That's what I would probably do. All right. Fair enough. It's fair enough. Thank you, Sister Wendy. Well done. Give yourself a big clap. Probably you can give yourself a big hug as well. I'm not seeing the clap. Oh, oh that sounds good. <laughs> I sent it as an emoji. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good and job. thanks to all my team who helped me as well. <laughs> good job. Good job. Bishop, 
Your time now, sir. All right, so um, I think I'm the one representing um, Bishop's team. Okay, go ahead. And, um, you know, we are all from different places and we didn't get to connect as we should. And um, the couple of us that did, we hope we understood what exactly you were asking of us. It, it was our view that based on what we did last week, we we're going to look at the an impact statement based on, on that. And, the, and I hope that was what you were asking. So yeah, we, are, we were looking at how, how could we relieve stress from, say, a leader in the church like the pastor, and then an impact statement of that. I, I guess that was what you were asking, right? Uh, Guy, it was more, remember we did conflict resolution last week, if I if my memory served me right, and how we managed that all entire process. This week we are looking at stress, but some amount of stress is in the impact statement. Right. So we 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 were looking at the yes, the polytheism method of division of labor. Uh, and yeah. we're looking at like the, the impact of, of what we did last week. So I hope I got it right. So yeah, um we were looking at the impact statement would have had we would look at how it would affect say a pastor who's a leader in a church. Yeah. We look at members yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and and we would look at the community. Um, and an impact statement for us can be positive and negative, but we 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 zeroed in on the the positive aspect of it. And we look at um if if for example um we're supposed to take stress off our leaders, what 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 would be the impact? Uh, of that, and we said it would reduce the pastor's workload, giving him more more quality time for his family and his church. We also said that it would facilitate training for more members. We said also it it helps to identify and use talents within within the congregations, and we also said it 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 allows underused members to become more active and feel appreciated and valued. The fifth point we made was that the family members of those who are becoming more active in church, who are non-Christians, will have a higher interest in, in the church because of their family members who are not participating. And finally, we said the image of the church Will, will will be enhanced when a wider range of people participating, thus putting to rest elitism and favoritism. So that was like an impact statement, you know, in a positive way, how it affects the pastor, church, and the community. Then we look quickly at the stock point, and we said that bad news that the pastor received is sheep. Is is a sheep that perplex him, affect his worship and family life. And we said like a pastor trying to solve a dispute between members of his congregation who, who, who are having disputes and um, they were never able to resolve it. And we're, we, we actually look at a real life example where we, we, we talk about a situation where there was an incident at the church the pastor called his committee to deal with the two the two warring factions that were family. And at the end of it, um, we thought that the problem was resolved. And then they were asked to shake hands as we were about to depart. And then they didn't. And I know that all oh, that affected, you know, the pastor in such a negative way. He spoke about it even years after. So that, that was like kind of our stop point, family dispute that you're unable to resolve. Each time you remember that, it just shut you down. Good job. I figured that you use Second Chronicles 20 structure for your impact statement. An impact statement, however, is something negative, but I realize that you reframe it, you know, in, in, in the sense of Second Chronicles 20 when Joseph had got that news and how it impacted him in terms of the fear that it brought to him, but 
he, he from that he he took a positive approach and and really pull Israel together to seek God and you and I know the outcome what it was you know so I figured that was the route you went but in order for it to be positive it, it had to be reframed but I like the approach you took you know I, not, thank you not a, not a bad approach you mm -hmm. know we can we can find evidence of it in the Bible as well as I said Joseph and we could find a lot more example with Ezekiah Shinasharib and and others of that nature, King of Assyria, and a number of other examples are, are in the Bible. Well done. Give yourself a clap, sir. And it's not, not for me, also the team. Yeah, man, for the team. You are the representative of the team. So, you know, wherever the other members of the team might be, well done. And Good job over the season, Evangelist Quarry. Even though you did not present tonight, you, you did a fairly good job last week. Can, can we have, we have 36 persons on. So I hope that before too long, 35 before too long, I hope that we'll have 36, you know. So it is something I, I would love for us to, really really have all right so this is where stress is when we have critical decisions to make, we, we get caught up in the whole thing about which way to go. And the paradox, you know, is just striking because it cripples everything we do and everything we attempt to do and everything we have in mind and all of that. So this is where we, we get in a little trouble. And stress can be good, it can be bad. This is, or it has the making for good stress, you know, where you are goal-oriented and you want to make a decision which way to go. It also has the measure of negative stress, which, you know, which way to go, what else, and, and, and it kills you because you, you become overwhelmed and you struggle with all the pieces that are a part of the process. So here is just like a mecca of stress on both sides of the coin. So this is something that we are going to come back to later on. And, and our stress scripture for tonight is the old stressful situation. And you read a beautiful one earlier, Bishop. You read a beautiful one. I like that one that, that you read earlier. You know, but this one I wanted us to focus tonight on Jesus's example of managing stress as it relates to the Garden of Gethsemane, right? So this is where we are going to go tonight. So save this one. We are going to come back to it later. What example is stress do? Stress is a state of worry or mental tension caused by a difficult situation. Stress is a natural human response that prompts us to address challenges and the threats in our lives. Everyone experiences stress to some degree. The way we respond to stress, however, makes a big difference to our overall well-being. And I think that is well said and it balances all the pieces because no two person deal with any stressful situation the same way. However, stress challenges all of us and it can naturally have a similar impact right across the spectrum. 
It is going to do some basic things. It is going to interfere with your sleep. It is going to interfere with your concentration, your focus. It is going to interfere with your performance. It is going to interfere with your eating habit. It's either you're going to eat too much or you're not going to eat. It is going to affect us in a general way. So I want us to understand that this, this definition represents a wide cross-section of all the pieces of stress. How does it affect us? Stress affects both the mind and the body. A little bit of stress. Here, somebody said, boy, me feel stress. Me just, no, me just feel stress. And just that normal stress start to grow and it grows and it becomes bigger, right? Now, sometimes, our reaction to the stressful situation makes it worse. A little bit of stress is good and can help us perform daily activities much better. Too much stress can cause physical and mental problems. Learning how to cope with stress can help us feel less overwhelmed and support our mental and physical well-being. Good? So stress is not a one-time situation or a one-shot deal. It is something that when it comes, we have to learn how to manage it and we have to learn how to cope with it. These are some of the physical symptoms of stress. Aches like headache, muscle ache, joint aches, all of those and pains are some of the effects, chest pain, or feeling like your heart is racing. And this, this, this is sort of physical, but yet psychological, because we are talking about panic attack here, or anxiety attack. We are talking about something like that. Exhaustion or trouble to sleep. Sorry, headache, dizziness, shaking it as shaking here, shaking still is tremor, where you are just trembling, you know? muscle tightness or your jaws are clinching mm, stomach or digestive problem your microbiomes you know your microbiome your gut health is connected to your brain by virtue of your vagus nerves and that impact us negatively when you are stressed your, your, your digestive system doesn't work well because one of the things, as I said last week, your body is reserving the energy. It is trying to preserve the energy. So some of the functions are going to be either shut down or curtailed. Anxiety or irritability. You get angry easily and you can't manage any amount of stress, your degree of tolerance is out of work. You just can't manage anything. You are suspect, you snap easily. You, you just, you, you are just not in a good order, in a good mindset, and everything goes through the window. You get depressed, you cry, and you can't identify a reason behind why you are crying. Some, some, some of us sometimes will become very abusive. Men sometimes you'll find they eat out at their wives. They eat them. They abuse their children. Hmm? Sometimes you'll see them just revving the cars, just driving the car recklessly. All of these are pieces of how people anger, depression, and stress, and anxiety, and all of that. And we spoke about the panic attack, and we. We, we, we spoke about the depressive sadness where there's just a here a per, pervasive sadness and the sadness continues for a period of two weeks and so on. And you are just sad. You have frequent mood swings, but the moods are more, the mood swings, they are more sudden and, and depressive and all of that, you know, that sort of feeling, it, it prevails. And then chronic stress, brings about behavioral changes. It brings into the picture unhealthy behaviors. 
you know, people start to eat unhealthy food, you start to snack a lot, and you might have sinus and you know you shouldn't eat cheese and peanut, but all of a sudden you just develop an appetite for them and you can't control that appetite. It is just unhealthy and persons, you know, pers you'll see persons around you, they start to smoke. When you go to work, you might notice that persons are smoking and drinking and all of that start to happen and the, 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 the compulsive sexual activity. And even in church, you might notice sisters or brothers start to become very sexually oriented uh, as if they are just realizing that they have sexual organs and it is very compulsive and impulsive, you know, so you find that it's something that they they want to indulge in and you have to pull them back, back Bishop, you know, Pastor Quarry, you 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 can you can talk with me here. Pastor Leng, you can you can be a part of the conversation here because you see it so often where you have a good brother, you have a good sister, and all of a sudden it's like they are in midlife crisis and they become compulsive in in their appetite for sex and sexual conversation and sexual conduct. And there's a fancy word that we refer to it now. For, for, for pastors and persons in the upper echelon of, of, of the, the church, they call it uh, the, the term just slip me. Uh, let me see if I can catch my bearing and remember what it is that moral failure. That is the sort of fancy term I hear they are calling it now. Moral failure. So, so it is something that it affects you. And so it is important that you, you, you bring into sharp focus the need for guidance, the need for counseling, the need to help them to get back to that, 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 that appetite for the words of God and a deeper relationship with God. You know, and, and, and Pastor Ling and, and Pastor Quarry, I, I, I don't know if you want to just jump into the conversation here and just share a little bit of your experience with us as to how have you ever seen this? Have you ever have it to deal with? And what are some of the steps that 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 you might have taken in dealing with it? Pastor Leng first, and then Pastor Quarry. Can just open your mic and go ahead. That impulsive and compulsive sexual overdrive. Pastor Leng? Is he on? Pastor Quarry? You are, are you ready? You want to go ahead until Pastor Leng? I, I, yeah, um, I'm not seeing him, but I know Pastor Hash is on as well as. Um, well, Bishop, you can point a question to those who you know. Bishop are. Green is on as well, and uh, oh, I'd love yeah. to hear his view as well. Yeah, but but um, my experience in that is is I've not experienced it since I'm here, but I know I experienced it um, in Jamaica, Jamaica with with um, with young people, even 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 married person as well. As a matter of fact, I, I know of a, a situation where the brother was so, so, was so crazy um, and, and he go, that he, he, go, he go way out of boundary. And um, as a matter of fact, I was, I was guiding him before he get there. And I remember um, I was at home one day and um, I heard a call and it was him, you know, at my gate and I um, invited him and he was just crying, crying as to what happened to him, what he did. And um, I really, you know, a matter of fact, I've never, the first I'm referring to it because I promised him so faithfully that he can, you know, trust me to reason with me as to what is happening in his life and what happened to him. And um, yeah, he, 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 he was, he was totally, you know, messed up because of, of the situation and how we handle it. 
and so I really have to, you know, guide him out of it in terms of, you know, counsel and, and prayer and even point him to the scripture as to let him understand what the word of God said and what he need to do as as a as a believer in in Christ. And he recover. He recover. Um he he sometimes you know thought that i i hold it you know on him but i also give him the assurance that if the you know the son has set him free then who is me to hold him guilty so i saw it in jamaica don't see it here but i know it is possible and there are persons who really fall into that situation pastor Fieber. thank you Thank you, Bishop. You can you can point the same question to to other ministers who are on. I'm just trying to find back my PowerPoint, my computer. I have not gotten a chance to clean it as yet. Well, um, many of the ministers that are on, I I didn't, you know, take it down myself, so But Bishop, if you know well. You, if, Bishop Green is on, so you know if you, you can have, just if you have seen it, then um are on the Pastor Green, Pastor Hash. You can go ahead, please. It's really about compulsive sexual desires and how it is that you manage it if you have seen it, you know. What 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 are what's the what was the manifestation and how it is that you you dealt with it. Yeah, sure. Um good evening. Sure. Peace and love to everybody. Um, yes, I have uh, I've had the opportunity to have come across it on several occasions. <clears throat> um, predominantly pornography. And um, it really requires a systematic approach <clears throat> depending obviously on the individual usually like you said it's linked to uh stress other times it's linked to depression um it may be also linked to you know that especially when you have young people who are unmarried um such things as masturbation uh they have this sexual urge and of course it is very difficult when you have reached a certain age and you are not married and so there is this challenge between what your natural emotions demand and your ability to satisfy it so it's very complex in that regard however in terms of solution uh, one of the techniques that we have uh, applied to this kind of challenge is to actually, similar to when people experience drug addictions um, or any sort of addiction of that kind, what we really try to do is to help them. It's, it's association. So we try to help them to understand, one, what is the point of contact? So what is it that, when did they start and what caused them to start? So we really try to take them back to that place of origin. Uh, secondly, um, because we are, we, we, sometimes we are able to associate a behavior with a experience. So like I said, sometimes a person may, yeah. Exactly. So uh, an example, sometimes a person, uh, I'll give you a classic example, not necessarily with sexually, but uh, there's a young man that I'm working with now, and he's gotten into gambling. And when we did the diagnosis, we, we were able to identify that it started with depression. So he was depressed, he's on the internet, 
He wants to feel alive. He wants to feel like he's accomplishing something. He wants something to take him out of that depression. So he started gambling. And every time he gambled, he felt energized. He felt motivated. He felt, he felt, for lack of a better word, alive. So yeah. as it relates to solution, what we try to do, obviously, in many cases, there are many institutions that offer free services um, for individuals who find themselves in any of these uh, conditions. Uh, one of the things I've worked with, and it's worked very well, very basic, very easy to do, and it's the same thing like when a person is on drugs and it's really weaning them off it. So rather than saying to somebody, well, right now you are, so I'll give you the example. The last example I used in this case was pornography. I would ask the person, how often do you find yourself on the internet watching this? And we'll write it down. And then we'll ask, when do you find that you do it? At what point of the day or you know, under what conditions? And we'll write it down. Once we have developed and, and synergized the, the behavior uh, with a condition, then what we try to do is rather than trying to get them to stop, we try to get, we create a plan to reduce, it's, it's a reduction of activities. And that worked very well to reduce the person's craving. So for instance, if the person said, right now I'm, I do, I find that I go on the internet to look at pornography five times a week. And here's when I find that it most com um, happens. Then we try to, we set a goal to say, rather than, hey, we want you to stop this right now, we are gonna set a target of six months to help you come off this behavior. And then we set a target to say for the first month, we're only trying to get you from five days, twice a day to four days, uh, once a day by the end of the month. And, and so we use that as a tracking system. Um, we, we also give the person, sorry, I'm being long winded here. We also give the person, um, a note. They write down their feelings, their emotions, what's happening at the time. Um, they write down every time they do it, they write how they feel if they got through a day where they didn't feel it what 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 were some of the successes they experienced and i'll just stop here by saying that you know over the years i've found that this approach very simple doesn't really require you know a, a vast amount of training is was able to help a lot of people overcome um sexual habits such as pornography masturbation um even uh, you know, um, fornication. So, so that's been my experience. Sorry, doctor, for being so long winded. No, I think, I think, you know, you are, you are right on point. You are very much right on point. You know, when you look at your plavlo structure, the stimuli and uh, the impact of the stimuli and how it control the behaviors, you know, and, uh, when you look at the CBT techniques in terms of how you manage the thoughts, the feelings, and, and the subsequent behaviors. So you are right on point, and, and that is healthy. When you look at the whole thing of how persons manage their sexual desire, because those sexual desires pull you away from, from your main source, which is Christ, the word of God, prayer, it pulls you away from what keeps you connected to God because it changes the appetite. And, and, and that, that is right in the realms of chronic stress. And, and so when we talk about chronic, we talk about long-term. When we talk about acute, we talk about short-term. So when we talk about chronic stress here, we're talking about something over the long-term and, and it keeps going and going. And, and if we should talk about a more complex structure, you know, it will be a different situation, but we're talking about chronic stress here. So when we look at that, the, the, the desires, the drugs, all of these, the sexual immorality, the sexual desires, they 
pull you away from your main source, which is the word of God, the words of God. And, and, and when that happens, you become weaker and you become more vulnerable and you start to practice the things that are contrary to healthy spiritual living. So beautiful. I love that. And, and a lot of persons would have picked up, you know, several pieces from the conversation, the points you made. Thank you, Bishop Green. Pastor Lingar, anyone else who wanted to just weigh in quickly here? I hope time is not getting away from us. Or can we move on? How to manage stress. Build your emotional boundaries. Create and maintain a daily routine. Exercise regularly. Exercise is important, people. Exercise enlarges the hippocampus. That's one of the things that it does. It relaxes the muscle. It helps you to sleep better. It calms you. It puts you in a state of peace of mind and a readiness. So exercise is generally healthy for the body because what it does is, is that it en en enhances neuroplasticity and neurogenesis, which is where the body creates new cell and repair the old and dying one. And neuroplasticity is about the ability to, for the brain to adapt to different situations. Stress is a different situation, an adverse situation. And so the brain creates that amount of flexibility that you can adjust to the changes in life. So exercises. Yes, Bishop Lane. Bishop Lane. Yes, yeah, sorry. Good evening, everybody. I was away from the phone. So, so we're looking at how, how we address. I didn't get, quite get the question. Is it how we deal with it from our own personal perspective or in the congregation? I want to. Well, whether in the congregation or not, it is, it is going to be your own personal perspective, whether you choose to use scripture alone okay. or you choose to use a mix of scripture and the professional capabilities. Uh, 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 whatever you know, it's just your your side too. All right, so 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 we have we have already concluded that as long as we're alive, we're going to have, as long as we're alive and dynamic, we're going to have stress, right? The impact that it will have will depend on our own mindset and perspective. Now, one of the one of the things that I think we need to first of all recognize is who we are. Remember from the first program you had, when we were talking about crisis, I yeah. said that, I said that the, the identity crisis is the foundation of all of the others. Yeah, man, who am I? When who you know, I when I you going? know who you are and whose you are, it gives you an advantage in every situation because it provides you with a base that is like your base of operation you can always go back there just like it, it seemed that jesus had his quiet place where he would go <laughs> well he, i know he, he would have been distressed by the com by the compassion that he had right so he would carry the burden he was a burden bearer he took our infirmities with him so he must have taken those to the father when he was away from the crowd so, so for me, I believe that our own identity, knowing who we are, actually gives us a very good starting point for dealing with stress, wherever it comes from. And even as we seek to help people who are dealing with stress that seems overwhelming, we have to try to help them to get to that place because denial of oneself will be defeating in every area, no matter what you try. If we don't come to terms with who we are first, then we are not going to make 
progress in dealing with stress successfully. So knowing who you are gives you a basis on which to deal with it. Like, like let's say if we look at Jesus Christ, we have expectations of him because of who he is. He's the son of God. Now, let's say you look at yourself or I look at myself as a child of God. Then I am going to use that as a foundation on which I'm going to start to make certain decisions. So if I'm having a problem, whether it is emotional, physical or whatever, I am going to remind myself first of all of that. Then I look at what the expectation is, what resources they are, because he does give us framework in which to deal with stress. We are told if, if we are sick, we know what to do. If like, <laughs> whatever the situation, like I, one of my favorite Psalms, I think it is found in about three Psalms, or it's repeated in some Psalm 42, Psalm 43. The question is asked, why art thou cast down O my soul? Why am I in this <laughs> frame of mind? <laughs> right? And then, just like I said, he goes back to, it becomes a rhetorical question. He goes back to his base. Hope thou in God. In other words, I'm God's child. I know where I can go to recline. So I go there. And I think one of the best ways we can help people we, we may not, it's not going to be a one shot thing, but where brethren are concerned, we ought to recognize where our resting place is. My soul find rest in the Lord. So I go there and I look at all the instructions that he gave me. I look at all the provisions that he has made. And then I can start to deal with whatever circumstance I am encountering at that particular point in time. But as a child of God, we have to remind ourselves of who we are so that we, and, 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 it, and it is very important when, when someone is trying to help us that we recognize that we are God's children and there are certain expectations of us. And so we open ourselves to correction our direction so that our lives can be better. But trying to deal with stress without your own self-identity is going to be almost useless in the long run. We need to start there. And, I, I, and this is what I'm saying to all of us here, that we must remind ourselves of who we are. If we have not yet discovered who we are, we need self-discovery so that we can start to deal with the realities because a lot of people hide in the crowd. They hide behind things that they do. A lot of people work, you know, and people don't realize. They think that they are doing genuine work. They are, they are doing work in an effort to overcome stress that they may be experiencing. And so somebody may tell you, boy, all is going well, but they are under great stress and they are using work as a therapy. And sometimes it doesn't work depending on the nature of it. But as children of God, we have a clear advantage and we are to use it to help ourselves to deal with stress and also to help others too. Right. I stop there. All right. Beautiful. Thank you, Pastor Ling. All right. So I see your hand, Pastor Marshall, but just give me a few and then I'll, I'll come right back to you. All right. Go ahead now. So that when I go, I just go. Go ahead, Pastor Marshall. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessings. Veteran uh, and Bishop. I praise God for you. What I want to bring, oh, I, I see that stress is something that is good and it is bad. And since I realized the danger because stress kill more people than what crime kill take. So I tried my very best to I explain it like this. When I wake up in the morning, I wake up and stress woke me up. 
And after I woke up, I did not stay in stress that it becomes stressor. I removed from that first stage by remembering what Job said when he was that stressful. And I compare what Eli did when he was so stressful. But what I practice that when you go into a stick shift car and you start in one gear, you did not continue in one gear on the highway because I realized that it would tear up the engine. And so I all manner of things if I don't get out of it. So I try to be conscious at all time and don't allow it to get contagious or get chronic because when it gets to that stage, it's hard for you to angle it. Now I wonder why the writer declared that don't let the sun go down with your rod. And also he says, be angry and sin not. So I try to use those principles and it worked for me, sir. So that is just what I want to say. I, I, I am not gonna go further to take up your time. Thank you, Pastor Marshall. All right, so let's write on. Now, sleep is important. For me, sleep is king exercise, diet, and all of that, you know, but sleep, the body does so much when you rest. It is so important when you take time out to rest, you know, so sleep is just critical. Make sure you get enough sleep. Make sure that your bedroom is dark enough. Get rid of the devices, leave them out of the bedroom. I know the devices, they are so important to us, especially the phone. Someone need to reach you in the wee hours of the night. Your phone is the medium by which they reach you. What we find from, from looking at the research is that a period of two hours before bedtime is that you should not expose yourself to blue lights. You know, turn off the TV, a period, develop a system where you have good, healthy family time so that, you know, you can have the conversation with your partner, with your children. Take away the TV from that time and then it will enhance your sleep. If you have sleep apnea or anything like that, I think you need to get help so that, you know, your sleep can be more restful. It is important, avoid large meals, avoid caffeine, alcohol, before bedtime, avoid them totally because, you know, the caffeine sort of interfere with, with certain receptors in, in, in the brain, you know, the adenosine receptors and triggers the adrenal glands. And then that triggers the production of, of excess adrenaline. So, so the body wakes up instead of shutting down. So it is important. This, this whole sleep thing is a whole different workshop, a whole different study, so that you can look at all the pieces of, of, of sleep and how it works, you know. Here we want to look at six strategies, and this is where the activities will, will, will begin. You know, we want to look at six strategies for managing stress. And the first one speaks to identifying and addressing the negative thoughts. And Bishop Green spoke to this to a certain extent. You know, how you identify and address the negative thoughts. Write them down in a journal or on a piece of paper. Just like if, if you take the fish out of the water, the fish is going to die. If you take the thoughts out of your head, put them on a piece of paper, 
those thoughts are going to die. Write them down. Take a closer look at each of the thoughts and ask yourself if it is realistic. Because a lot of times, you know, we, we, we have a cycle of about 55 to 80, 90,000 thoughts per day. And it's only 5% of those thoughts are actually real. I'll say it again, 55,000 to 90,000, somewhere in there on a 24-hour cycle. That's the amount of thoughts that goes through our head. And only 5% of that, whichever end you want to put it, only 5% of those thoughts are real. Try to reframe each negative thought into more positive or realistic ones. Practice these new, more positive thoughts regularly to help retain, to help your brain retain that new positive thought. And here is where you look at reframing, change the thoughts, change your perspective, Practice a new perspective. Look at it from a different angle, a more positive and enlightening angle, right? Identify the situation. Identify the stress, the source of the stress. Identify all the pieces of it. Challenge those negative thoughts. It's like you're in a courtroom. Challenge those negative thoughts. How do you bring those negative thoughts to bear? Problem solving, identify the stress. It is important that you identify the stress, identify the problem. You can also write down the statement of problem, write it down. The problem event, problem statement, write it down. Then brainstorm. What are the possible solutions? Evaluate each solution. Choose the best option and then you take action. Pay attention to all of these slides. They are coming back at you immediately. Practice relaxation. Your mindfulness, stay in the moment. Acknowledge and recognize and accept your thoughts. Don't be judgmental. The thoughts are coming not because of anything that you did necessarily. Probably you were exposed to a particular environment and they activate this, these thoughts. So don't judge yourself. Don't condemn yourself. Don't, don't, don't pass a guilty verdict on yourself. Hmm? Use deep breathing. Set realistic goal for a sense of achievement. And we know the smart goal structure is specific, make sure it is, a, it is achievable. It, 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 there's a time structure to it, so it is timely, it is measurable, and it is realistic. Practice assertiveness, and this is where you are going to develop a balance in terms of your behavior, in terms of your communication, where you know, listen to person more, respect person's view, Take person's view on board and entertain them, have a discussion about them, allow persons to feel a part of it, a part of the process. You are not insultive, you know, you are not negative, you are not autocratic, but here is where you take person's view on board and allow them to be a part of the process, to engage in the process, and then you'll have a greater buy-in. Be clear and direct. Be polite. Watch how you say what you say. Be clear. Set boundaries. Understand when an explanation is needed and why it is needed as against when it is not needed. Don't, don't dwell in, in, in a toxic environment. If the environment becomes too toxic, that's not an environment for you. Look at, the, look at the solution that is needed 
and understand whether you need to be assertive here or passive. However, assertive is always the best method because it is more balanced and it offers the opportunity to everyone to be heard and the opportunity for you to address the different perspective or to pull on the different perspective that are available. Practice self-care. Self-preservation is the most fundamental thing in life because if you don't have you, you have nothing at all. We are all we have. Now let's go back up. Evangelist Quarry, we are going to go into, I want about six groups. Let me see how much time I have. I have a little bit of time. It's 9.21. All right, so let us get into about six groups. Evangelist Quarry, let us get into about six groups quickly. Another mm -hmm. half an hour, Bishop, do I have so much? And we should be out. Six groups. Yes, you have about half an hour. Mm -hmm. Just group them for me. Now, let me tell you what I want you to do. I want six and each group must have a leader. One group is going to look at the church, the domestic church. So the first group is going to look at the domestic church and you're going to use the first strategy. Let me bring that one up for you. You are going to address and identify the negative thoughts. What are some of the negative thoughts in the church environment that is fostering a greater level of stress and is creating a stressful environment? It is creating a stressful environment for the pastor, for worship, for fellowship, for unity. It is creating a stressful environment for the church. Now, you write that down, Star Wendy? Because I know I know you are one of the writers. <laughs> one of the writers. On. I got it, sir. Got it. Thank okay. you. <laughs> now, group two, group two, what you are going to do, you are going to identify some of the negative situations that the pastors within the body are dealing with and look at recommendations as to how you create perspective to these negative situations to allow the pastors to carry out their function in a, in a more toxic free environment. An environment that is not that is not as toxic as it is now. You got that, Star Wendy? Yes, I have a helper too. <laughs> Good. Now, group three. This is a problem problem solving group. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to develop a training manual for, yeah, a, a, let me say a training plan. Let me take the word manual out. A training plan as to how the church should address different stressful situations. So say, for example, we spoke about compulsive sexual activity. How, we, how it, what, what effect does that have on the church as a group, as a body? What are some of your recommendations? What, 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 is, your what is your training plan to manage that? When I passed the Green's group, 
Yeah, that one. Oh, you put in Pastor Green. You, you, you're giving Pastor Green that group. Oh, I'm unmuted. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so sorry. Sorry. Assign that one to Pastor Green. It sounds like that. Sorry. Yeah, that one sounds like him for you. All right. The question I want this group to answer for me do we as a church need to understand the value of socialization within the realms of psychology and scripture? Understanding the realms of socialization with psychology and scripture are the balance between both of them. Can you repeat it, um, Pastor Amir? The question I want to answer here is, does the church need to an understanding of the balance between psychology and scripture let me make it as simple as possible so for this group for this group i want this group to address the situation or to address the situation as to whether or not the church have a workable goal setting structure. Does the church have a workable goal setting structure or do you see the church as an ad hoc body that is pro reactive as against proactive? Get that, Sister Wendy? I repeat for the last. I'm, I'm stuck at ad hoc body. Yeah. What did I say after that? Okay. Workable goals, um, setting structure, or an ad hoc body. Mm -hmm. As it relates. That body that is reactive instead of proactive. Proactive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I'm just giving them out of my head, you know, so if you miss them, you might be in a little bit of trouble. Last one. I want this group to develop a communication plan that can effectively manage stress within the church and among the fellowship of each church. And it has to be an assertive communication plan. Within the church and? Within the church and within the leadership. Okay. So the general membership leadership, we want to address that has to be assertive though, not aggressive or passive, assertive. All right, so groups, no evangelists. And, and, and bishop and bishop, don't, don't feel any way that I call her evangelist. I am I'm just a name caller. That's just me. I call everybody an oversight bishop. So I'm just a name caller. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to clear That's the <laughs> hmm. All right, so you're creating the groups now? Yes, I am. Person so should be seen a pop up. On. Person should be seen a pop up. So um, 
you can just move yourself to the, the group. I did it automatically. So let's hope I don't have like two pastors in one group. Let's hope that's not the case. <laughs> I can reassign them accordingly anyways. So Hello? All right, so let's go to group one. Lisa? Mr. Corey? That's the Marshall, you're not going to a group. I'm Sister Vanessa. Did I assign Mr. Corey? Sister yeah. Corey? Yes. Um copy the copy the chat and uh put it in the broadcast message so the rooms can see the what's in the chat. The question.
Everyone met me.
Okay, for those of, of, of us who are back already, welcome back. No, we're, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. We're just waiting until the others um join us. They're just wrapping up their I am good. presentation. I hope I didn't bump anyone out. Well, at this time, you need to. I see as if everyone is coming back now. Number is getting up back. Oh, I appreciate the small group so much. Thank you, Pastor Amiel. It's so wonderful. Welcome. I think the right honorable evangelist query is to be credited for that. Oh, yes, but you, we wouldn't do it if you didn't ask. <laughs> yeah, really wanted some smaller groups. Yeah, really great. Thank you, Sister Quarry. I think you can go ahead now, Doctor. Um, um, Everybody's back. Yep. All right. So, group number one. Can we use a uh, three minutes or? How much groups were there, Evangelist 6? So five in total, because group number two, when I went to the other groups, everybody was well in, into what they were actually discussing. Um, so I'm sorry. I should have the right Wait, honor. I should have recognized before. <laughs> sorry Wait. about that. So group number we two. Have... Go ahead. No, that's it. Then go ahead. Group number two. All right, is so we have... We have five groups. Mm -hmm. We have 15 minutes, Bishop. Can we use that 15 minutes to close out? So each group would have three minutes, maximum of three minutes. Who is going to be the timekeeper? You're going to be the timekeeper, Bishop? I can keep the time. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm talking and didn't realize my mic mute. Sorry. <laughs> Or you can go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead, Sister Corey. Thank you so much. No problem. So, your honor, go ahead with, with, with group, group. Okay, group one. number one? Yeah. I have a right here. What are the persons in group one? Give me one minute. Sister Wendy, was that your group? So go yes, ahead. Yes. Okay. I, I wasn't sure what you're waiting, so I'm like, I'll wait to, until you signal. All okay. right. So we had to look at um, the negative thoughts. Um, we had to look at the domestic church and what negative thoughts are created in st a stressful environment. Mm -hmm. So we came up with about um, 10 points. And... Number one is criticism. So we had those who love to criticize but have absolutely no solution. 
um, that's creating a lot of stress. Um, those who um, persons who feel they are better than others and they're dominating, you know, everything like they're the better prayer, they're the better singers, they're those kind of persons. Um, we also have, have the ones who create little clicks, so nobody can be part of that group. It's them and them alone. Nobody else is invited. Um, it also, um, we recognize that there is a lot of insecurities. Hmm? Members That's only. That. Yes, yes, exactly. I like that. <laughs> um, we also have those who are disrespectful, and this goes both ways. It could be um, the members are disrespectful to the leaders and also vice versa, where the leaders are also disrespectful to their members. Um, there is over expectancy and expectancies are not met in certain areas, which brings contention and um, misunderstanding within the congregation. Also, there is a um, lack of participation, also lack of accountability, being lazy, in inconsistency within the church, also lack of information. So when you come in, there is no sort of information as to sometimes where do you go for the youth or you know who do you speak to for what? And the last one we recognized was selfishness. And that's what we have. How about gossip? Ah, you know what? There was so much coming. We didn't even remember that one, <laughs> which is a big one. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. So, so thank you. Group number three now, Pastor Quarry, is that your group? Just just before you go to group number oh, three, yeah. were there any recommendation as to how you you could manage those negative thoughts, Sister Wendy? Those, you know, within within those points that you brought to bear, were there any recommendation as to how the pastor would address the situation? Well, one thing, personally, we didn't get to that. The only one that um, we, we, we really spoke about and was a personal testimony of mine as well is um, how to do things differently, right? So let's say in terms of criticism, uh, people always criticizing with no solution. Um, definitely, like, we could, um, like, speak, Sometimes one person mentioned that we can speak instead of just constantly criticizing. You know, you can speak about the good points. So let's say we're criticizing the church on a whole, like come up with good points that you see about the church and then you can bring your suggestion, you know, and solution to, um, to the minister as to what you could see a change. Or if it's on a personal level, you come to me and said, you know, Sister Wendy, you're really good at writing, you know, but... Um, they see where you can improve in presenting or, you know, something like that. Yeah. And training. Training is is, an, is a total key to, you know, everything here. Once we get training, I believe it's, we can get better. Once people uh, have a teachable spirit and willing to be trained. So group number three is develop a training plan for how the church should address stressful situations. Yes, and that's, that's our group. Mr. Millicent is our representative. We have decided that first we would identify resources. Um, first we'll put a committee in place, then identify resources, getting capable persons to, to help. Um, have workshops, have persons to come in and help us. Um, uh, if situation becomes chronic, we we'll refer personal persons to a more professional environment. And um, I added this, and I hope my, my group won't, <laughs> to encourage, you know, writing journals, help each other to be more assertive 
we should also let the pastor or leader be aware of situations and give him also suggestions because sometimes they do need uh, our help. And um, there is a word I added, you stress, that is a positive stress. And we can use that in the group to help bring out people's talents and, 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 and ideas. That's it. I don't know if Pat Pat wants to add. What about your need assessment? Um, oh, 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 you? Yeah, go ahead, Evangelist. Go ahead. I was thinking to myself just to add to this conversation that um, I did a course a few months ago, and it's it's really just accounting pretty much with a chain supply, and it says if that's the case, then do this. If that's not the case, then go to step B. That sort of thing. So I think um I I liked the suggestions that were made. Was maybe if we can say okay, if it's a general situation, um think about a workshop. If it's a specific situation, think about, you know what I mean? So just maybe to tweet it a little bit so that it it is actually um useful to a general church population, a populace, as well as a specific um person, because there are some persons who are some some situations that are unique to one person that we would need to deal with differently as opposed to if it's a situation that is affecting a group of persons, put it or, that way. Or to one, or to one church. Mm -hmm. Rather yeah, than the entire body. Yeah, so the so the need assessment will come from the relevant persons who put who is put into place, like the committee. Um because we're not going to leave that to everybody to 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 identify that. So um, that 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 um, group will look at the, the need assessment and um, as to as as was said, whether it is an individual situation or a corporate situation, and the way forward as to how we tackle it. Okay. I, I I I would sort of think though, Bishop, that, that we probably would want a need assessment to guide or formulate the group what 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 the groups will be doing or all of that. So I figure that the need assessment would be right up front to sort of give guidance to the process as to where it goes, how you shape it, mm -hmm. how, how you deploy your your human resources, your financial resources, your technological resources. You know, it would be like a guard reel, you know, to, to sort of give some amount of guidance down the pipeline. Okay. Well, well done. Very, very good. All right, moving forward, that group took four minutes. You're punished. Um, group number four or five. Um, is it number five? Four. Four. Oh, yes, group number four. My yeah. bad. Do we, as a church, do we need to understand the value of socialization within the realm of um psychology and scripture? Group number four, and that was um Pastor Green. Dr. Mullins, Pastor Marshall, man, the group here heavy. Go right ahead. President, good evening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to share in this evening session. I must acknowledge everyone who is here tonight. And I'm going to be speaking on behalf of the group that you named just now. If you will allow me to share my screen, I would be happy. Do I have sharing privileges? Yes, go ahead. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Right While she's doing that, I think she's the head of the pharmaceutical division at UTEC. She has a double PhD. That's Dr. Mullins. She's a lecturer as well. So that's Dr. Mullins. 
Okay, share your screen, Dr. Molly. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Dr. Amy. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so quickly, we will share the, just a summary of what was said in the discussion. The topic we have is the value of socialization, balance between psychology and scripture as it relates to stress management, because I think that's the focus of our discussions this evening. Mm -hmm. This is the quick thing that we'll talk about, the overview. And the major focus is the balance between psychology and scripture. The team members are Pastor Howard Green, Sister Linda, Sister Faye, myself, and Dr. Amy was in our group for a quick minutes. <laughs> the scripture that comes to mind is be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension will guard our hearts and our minds. I believe that is a fundamental scripture that most of us think about when we get sick, when we get ill, when anything is bothering us. And we're talking about stress as it were now. But there were some questions that we mulled over while we were in our group. And these are some of the questions for noting. Is stress an authentic experience? How do we as a church manage stress? And the team asks the question, can a Christian suffer or experience such type of stress that would require psychological stress management? And before someone, the group just now spoke to you stress and they spoke, well, they didn't really go to distress, but they, those are the two main types of stress that persons do experience. You stress being positive, but distress is really what we speak about when we talk about mental health and the challenges that we have. The other question is, is there, and maybe this is a type of error, sorry. Is there a place for the psychologist and the techniques of the psychologist or the psychiatric um, mental health practitioner, is there a place for these persons in our lives? The discussion further spoke to, and we made a comparison to someone being ill, say you have diabetes or high blood pressure, or any ailment in the body that hampers you physically, do you go to a medical practitioner? Do you go to a nurse to get your blood pressure checked? Do you go to a pharmacist to get your drugs for relief of whatever the illness is? And I'm sure the resounding response would be yes. The question therefore, why is it we do not see mental illness or stress in this case as a condition that we need to seek such help? Do we just continue fasting and praying and hope that one day we will wake up after all this fasting and prayer and our emotional challenges disappear? I want us to think about those things. And so we looked at the social support that the church family can provide. And we all need that social support. So we do understand that there is a place for the mental health practitioners, and we also have a place where the scripture is finding its place. But how do we put those together to provide the social support that we are needing in this time of our mental challenges? Do we still feel that sense of belongingness when we come into that space, when our, we're at home, alone sometimes, or even sometimes we're with big crowd, but we're still feeling that emotional disconnect. Is there a place for the scripture? And I'm sure I'll hear a resounding yes from all who are here, but is there a place for the mental health practitioner? And so I conclude this discussion. First Peter chapter five or seven says, cast all anxiety on him because he cares for you. But even with that, we have the knowledge that socialization 
in the context of psychology and scripture offer valuable resources for stress management. And this includes the social support, the networking, the coping strategies, the spiritual guidance. And here we need to balance what the psychiatrists or the psychologists will say, because we do know that some of the practices are not aligned with scripture. So we need to have an understanding of scripture also and to be guided thereby. Take the opportunity, everyone here, to relax and enjoy and encourage the social connection that you feel and experience from your church family. Nourish the positive relationships that you have so that you can have a holistic way to manage your stress. Thank you. Thank you. Very good, Dr. Mullins. Thank you much. Thank you. Very comprehensive indeed, Dr. Fuzz. I love it. All right. Group number five um, is Sister Vanessa um, and company. And wow, well, indeed. Very structured. Um, the situation, there to address the situation as to whether the church is a workable as, sorry, a workable goal structure in place? Or do you see the church as an ad hoc body that is reactive instead of proactive? And maybe make some suggestions as what you think you would want to see in place. We go now? Go right ahead. <laughs> I don't think I can talk after Dr. Mark. You know, I feel like I lost the words. <laughs> but <laughs> awesome. Um, so we uh, believe it's a balance 50-50. So in structured, we feel the church has in place um, like man ministry, women ministry, uh, children ministry, um, the prime ministries. Um, we feel that certain things are reactive in terms of if someone a uh, family member passed then something may come up to help that um, family or individual but it's not really structured in place um, we feel in terms of financial support and emotional support again it's not a structured where um, the church is proactive to say uh, for for financial, we discuss like brethren going through financial hardship where the church has something in place in terms of helping with rent maybe a month or two um, or just a one-off situation in calling um, the church together on this if the person feels comfortable. It, but instead, something should be in place. Um, with the children, we feel that um, churches need to be more um, structure in place for the youths. Uh, there should be more um, structure in terms of even school, uh, helping with um, those that are going off to uh, their education. The church should invest to say here's a hundred dollar or two hundred dollar towards that to invest in the youths. Um, also, speak on the fact in homework club to help um, um, students that are in school that parents may not understand and to help with the homework that's given now and if something should be in place for those um, as well. Um, did I miss anything, Sister Ivy? Don't remember. Sister Ivy? No, no, you seem to be doing well. <laughs> that's okay. So, yeah, so I think that was what we discussed so far. Oh, and yeah, and the, so with the recommendation, we um, we want the church to be more proactive, especially with um, the emotional side. So Bible studies like this, that we're dealing with stress and all that. So things that can be in place to help um, ongoing um, because every one is different um, in terms of um, resources and stuff like that. Very good.
Very good. Thank you very much. Very good. Go ahead, Evangelist Corey. Yes, I wanted to pretty much go on record. I'm not so sure. Maybe it's not my brethren were in Sister Venice's group, but um, my church is, and there's always room for improvement. And as I, and I too joined the fact that there are some some areas that we are reactive and some are proactive. But one of the areas we, that we found, especially during the pandemic and when the pandemic was starting, that a lot of our members were losing their family members over time, mother, father, sister, brother. And there's actually a system in what we have in place that um, to assist family members if they lose a loved one, right? So if you lose a sister, we have a system in place and an amount in place that we... Uh, commit to giving that particular sister or brother. Um, if it's a mother, it's a little bit different. So we do have a system in place and we have a document that guides that system as well. So that's just one of the things that when I hear sister, Vanessa was saying that there was, she thinks in a general that there may be nothing in place. Um, I can probably say that my church have that one little thing in place. Lots to improve, but yeah. I want to give Pastor Corey the kudos where the kudos is 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 is, is deserving, you know, because we're going to slash him and whip him bum where Amen. it is deserving as well. So <laughs> it's commending where the commendation is. <laughs> All right. So I just wanted to put that in place uh, to say that. And I do love group number six. Now, I do love the, the suggestion about the young people going off to school. That's something that we really need to work on. A little bit more investment in our young people. A little bit more proactive investment in our young people for real. And just have systems in place because they, they go through so much when changes when they go into school that they need that support base to be there. And they need to know ahead of time when they're going that that support base is there for them, hard and tough questions that they can come back. You know, there is a place for them to come back to, to actually ask their questions and get that support that they need. So I love that point. All right, rule number six, develop, sorry. Important points. And as as different church groups are on, I, I hope that these, these solutions, these recommendations, we take them on board, you know, not take them in a negative way or, or personalize them, you know, but let us take them on board, you know, in, in a strategic way so that the church can grow and benefit from this sort of investment. Because this is indeed an investment, a lesson study like this where so much technical and strategic skills and capabilities are on you know, and these information are being presented. I think it is something that we need to take on board. Don't be afraid, you know, or don't be tentative or, or don't be thin skinned, but take them on board and let us look at how we can enhance or we can develop or we can grow the church and move the church to another level, really in a strategic way. Because church really don't think about strategy and church don't think that we need we need marketing and marketing capabilities and skills and all of that, but we do need them. Evangelism is marketing, you know, so so it is something when we have discussions like these, you know, they are meaningful and should be taken. Uh -huh. well, sorry, Dr. Robert. Um, one of the big thing was invest in mentorship program and discipleship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and right there, and then we sort of talk somewhat about the gap analysis when we talk about discipleship, you know, but as another subject for another day. <laughs> Indeed. So we're going to quickly move to group number six, develop an assertive communication plan that can effectively manage stress within the church and with the leadership. That group is Sister Gooden, Sister Sandra, Pastor Lang, Sister Guthrie, Brother Steve, and Brother Steve, and this, this Sister Stephanie Cole. Go ahead. Pleasant good night. I didn't hear you call my name, um, Sister 
quarry, but this is the great mysterious. And the great mysterious. Great, great, great. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So a pleasant good night. I, I, I hope what I have um encourages and I hope what I have makes sense. And I hope what um I have was a topic that you that you wanted to enlighten on. So mm -hmm. um so basically um this involves the development of assertive plans for the church. You know, involves like you know, promote open communication, um, addressing conflicts constructively and fostering a supportive and inclusive environment. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight a few points. Um, say for instance, you're gonna establish a clear communication. Um, this means like, you know, you're gonna include like a regular meetings, uh, suggestions box, and different online programs like what um Pastor Quarry having now and other social programs that we always have, right? Online or in the churches, all right? Um, you're gonna encourage active listening. Um, sorry, <coughs> sorry. Like you're gonna promote active listening among uh, the church members to ensure that everyone feels that they're being heard or understood. That sometimes persons felt that oh they're not being heard of the point that they have, right? Um, number three, you're gonna educate on assertive communication. Like you're gonna provide like workshops or training sessions, you know, and finding um different techniques to help the members of the church and to also en enhance their ability to express themselves respectfully. Um, number four, like setting boundaries. You know, when I say certain boundary, meaning div um, define like you're gonna have a clear communication and a clear boundaries regarding like uh, saying accepting the type of behavior that we portray sometimes. You know, and the language that we use. You know, we're gonna set a boundary for that. You know, and the interaction with the church and the community as well. Um, number five, you know, address conflict constructively. You know, um, and so we're gonna develop a protocol for addressing conflicts in a respectful and a constructive manner, such as like meditation, or we are gonna facilitate like a, a different discussion and bring up topics that can help others in different aspects in different ways or different ways, All right? Um, number six, uh, we're gonna promote diversity. So, and diversity and inclusion. So that includes like, ethnic group it doesn't matter what group you are you know what race or gender or background you're from right also number seven you're gonna lead by we are gonna lead by example so whatever assertive communication that we portray in our actions um with others uh we're gonna demonstrate respect you know empathy and integrity and all of that. Um, number eight, we're gonna provide support and resources. And this is offer, offer support services and resources for individuals. So like facing um, difficulties, right? Or in a conflict, you know? So we are gonna try to help them by postural care. Sorry guys, I have cold up my throat and um, or counseling, get some help for them. Number nine, celebrate achievement. So whatever they do in the church, you highlight it, um, whether it's the young people, whether it's the children, um, or basically then other groups, like you have the woman group, the women's, and you have the men group as well and the other groups that would be in the church, FYCers and stuff like that. And then 10, we're gonna regulate the evaluation. So for basically like every quarter, every three months, we're gonna evaluate how everybody's doing and we're gonna assess, you know, what we need to adjust and what we need to address and to make the church a better place. And I just want to quickly leave the scripture with you. Um, Ephesians 14, 
4 verse 15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is at the head, that is Christ. The verse emphasizes the importance of speaking truthfully, but with love, promoting assertiveness without aggression or hostility. Hospitality. So that is what we need in the church today. God bless you. Back to you, sister. Lisa. Wonderful. Wonderful. Over to you, Pastor Amil. Wonderful. One other thing I was listening for. Mystery. Mysterious. What's the, what's the word you used before? Mysterious. Great. 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 Yes, sir. Another thing I was listening for is your feedback loop. You know, I think that 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 has to be a part of the whole thing. You know, how information is cycled. You know, so so the feedback loop is is a critical part of it. How we engender feedback is a critical part of the process. You know, I was listening for that too. And you have several of them within the, the, the assertive domain that, that you could work. Go ahead, Mr. Um, I'm just wondering if the evaluation with the quarterly or I feel if the, it would be given the feedback and whatever at that time. Could we consider it that time? Say that again. Um, because you said you're looking at the feedback loop. And I'm yeah. thinking that um, when you're doing the evaluation that Sister Mysterious spoke about, that that is when that would come out, right? No, I, I think that while that is important, that, that does not constitute a feedback loop, though. The oh, feedback okay. loop would be, would be something that is there that facilitates, you know, rather than at a specific time. So, but excellent presentation, very, very good presentation. All right, so this has been a wonderful night. Pastor Corey, you are enjoying it. You don't want to run me off tonight, you know, because we are so enjoying it. It's a great, this is just a great night. I'd 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 love for 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 a few feedback on on you know anybody want to just briefly, you know, and in quickly just contribute to the entire process that 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 we have gone through tonight in terms of the, the activities. What, what, what were some of the ups and downs for you in terms of the activities that we just completed? Uh, Pastor, before you go any further, um, I just want to clarify. When you said the, the feedback loop, um, what is it exactly? Um, can you give me, can you give us a, a little bit of illustration as to... You want, you want to start a different, a different study now? Okay, all right then, sir. I'm not going there. It's okay. Yeah. When, it, when, when, when you talk about the feedback loop, what you're talking about, you're talking about structures that you, you put in place to facilitate feedback from, from one department to another department, from one supervisor to another supervisor. When you look at the pyramid, the ESS pyramid, how does information flow up and down that structure? Knowledge worker, the, the middle manager, the executives, the, the, the person at the bottom. How do we use a spherical? Do we use a circular? What sort of feedback loop we use to allow information to flow to and fro within the, 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 the system? Because a lot of times when we talk about communication strategies, yeah, because we, we don't have a proper feedback loop, then you have a whole lot of bottlenecks. When you have proper constituted feedback loop, then the information flow in a generic way. So, so my my pastor, let me ask you a question. So, when we when we do, I, I heard Sister um, Marcia was asking uh, about that. But when you do the evaluation, that's a piece meal. That's a piece meal. That's a oh, piece oh, that's a. It's oh, a that's piece. a piecemeal. Okay, okay. Because if, if, if it's only evaluation that facilitates feedback, then your organization is in. The organization is what? Sorry? In trouble. 
If it is only when you, you have quarterly meeting, then mm -hmm. feedback is facilitated. The organization is dying. Okay, so it's like an everyday thing then? It has to be. Be, okay. It has to be. And, and somebody, somebody spoke about something a while ago as it relates to communication and the proactiveness and all of that. You know, it has to be where, 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 where information is fed to and fro on a day-to-day -day basis. It has to be clear. It has to be direct. You know, so when you look at it, there has to be a feedback yeah, structure okay. within the organization. I see you want to say something, Mr. Wendy and, and Pastor Pori. I see both of you want to say something. I, I probably misread the book, but I figured out both of you. Um, you know? Yes, yes. I, I, I like I like the discussion and like what you're saying. But my question um, or my suggestion, a question and a suggestion, do you think that lack of resources can also, you know, hamper the flow of, of the structure in terms of, you know, lack of resources. And when you talk about feedback, would you would you suggest or would you say that a suggestion box within a church, a, a local church, can be a method of a, a feedback that is flow because it is their person's skin. You just have the relevant person to check on it on a weekly basis or or whichever time you choose to to, to look at those um comments and and feedback from person and address them that is good but it has so so much technicalities because when you when you talk about a suggestion box it talks about integrity talks about transparency talks about accountability on one hand on the other hand it talks about trust do we have the credibility to manage information in a confidential way that persons can feel comfortable in the integrity of the process to say, I can honestly trust the process to, to, to invest my most intimate thought in a suggestion box and I don't hear it on the rostrum, I don't hear it coming from a particular group. So, you know, it, it is good, but as long as we can sort out the ins and ends of it, or the ins and out of it, you know, to sort of ensure that persons have faith in the credibility and the confidentiality of the entire process. I would love to hear some more take on this. Pastor Green, Dr. Mullins, anybody else want to weigh in on the discussion here? Mr. Wendy, anybody just else want to weigh in on the discussion? Just a reminder, here? Um, Pastor. That oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here, I'm sorry. here in Canada, we are at 11, 10:45 right now. 10:35. <laughs> so I know it is interesting and 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 all of that, but we still have to, you know. Bear that in mind to, that we have right. gone an half an hour over our time, you know. Yeah. So um just bear that in mind. Thank you. Back to you, sir. Thanks for the invite. Thanks for everything. And it was it was a great season. Thanks again. I, Thanks for I, 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 I have no doubt to say, you know, I confirm to that. Um and even right now, you can see that persons are still willing to, to, to sit and listen. But the principle is that, you know, we have to adhere to, and we're we are talking about <laughs> management right here. And so we have to, we have to start it right here as well. So thanks again. And my wife would come and give that warm, you know, thank you more than I do. Um, but I really give God thanks for you, sir. And, um, uh, I'm just looking forward to have you back. You, you're such a humble man. You, you're, I don't know. You have a personality there that, I mean, you, you, you sound like Jesus who led the thousand into the wilderness and nobody recognized that they were heading to a place where there's no food and water. 
but the, the man was so entertaining that is when they get there they realize that and i said to people all the while that's how a, a pastor a minister should be you know people should just following you without not recognizing the distance and and the time and everything that could have distracted him and so far we thank god for you and um, as i said because of time i dismiss church and i will talk to you after <laughs> so we give god thanks for for tonight it's been a blessing and um i'm quite sure that sister lisa will come and and do that vote of thanks for for us really 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 interesting thank you so much um pastor leng are you there are you there pastor leng let me hear if you're there please if you're there i'm just going to invite you to close us in prayer then we have pastor marshall and then we have sister quarry and then let me before sister quarry even come let me apologize for the excess time that we have gone over uh, please please forgive me and thank you so much for your patience Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, giver of all good gifts, we thank you for life. We thank you for the opportunities that they present us, great God, so that we can come in harmony with your will for us. We know, Father, that it is out of your love, your wisdom, that you have brought us together for a session like this, great God. Amen. And we thank you for Dr. Amil that you have brought to us Amen. to share, Father God, your wisdom and to help us, great God, to line up, Father God, with your purpose for us. We know that none of us by ourselves, Lord, is adequately resourced Amen. so that we can take on all the challenges that this life offers. But because of your great love and your wondrous grace, you have bestowed gifts and talents to men, Father, and engrafted us, enlisted us as your co-workers, Amen. as you seek to bring us, Father, in line with your will, with your purpose for us. We thank you for this medium that you continue to use to educate your people, great God, and to bring us in alignment with our purpose, for you have a purpose for each of us life. Amen. We thank you for all those who have come and those who have shared, Father God, in one way or the other. We pray that by your spirit, you will allow us, Lord, to take that which has been sown and to allow it, Father God, to bear fruit in our lives so that those fruit, great God, can be a blessing to those with whom we interact on a daily basis. We want to praise and honor and magnify and glorify you oh, for your goodness to us. May your spirit continue to bind us together and to draw us into a closer bond, Father, so that, Lord, together we will build your kingdom, great God, so that when Jesus comes, Father, our reward will be secure. We thank you for your faithfulness and your love. And we just ask you to continue to use this medium for your glory as we humbly yield to your spirit's leading. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise amen. God. Thank you, Pastor. Link, Pastor Marshall. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Zoe. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above. He heavenly hosts. Praise Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And now unto Him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of His glory. With exceeding joy to the only wise God our Father, majestic and power, both now and forevermore, let the church of the living God shout, Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Pastor Marshall, still shining. I hear you. To God be the glory. 
just a quarry. All right, so I'm going to quickly.